This, everybody, is the wood apple, and the wood apple and I have a complicated relationship. The first time I had this, I found this in Malaysia, and it was totally rotted inside. Second time I had it, also in Malaysia, but I got it from a vendor who ensured me that it was ready, it was good to eat. So I got it, I ate it, and it was horrible. It tasted like rotting eggnog and potting soil. It was so bad that I actually put it in my top 10 worst fruits in the world episode. The flesh of the wood apple looks like dirt, and it tastes like dirt with cheesy eggnog in it. If that sounds like a terrible combination, that's because it is. So I thought that wood apple just wasn't for me. But then more recently, I did a tour, I actually hosted a tour where a bunch of people came with me to Thailand and we found it, we found it. I took one tour group through and we found it perfectly ripe. The guy there, he tested it, made sure it was good and we had finally a good one. Uh, all right. It tastes like that. It tastes like banana flavor. Like a banana, yeah, banana taste. Flavor. Okay. Like apple? That's right. What do you think? <laughs> so many emotions. <laughs> Citrusy, Christmassy, nutty. It's like bubble gum, like oatmeal and banana. This man has opened it for me, and this he smelled it, he said it was ready. So let's see what the true wood apple tastes like. It's okay, yeah. It still has a little bit of the eggnog taste, but not nearly how it was before. This tastes like a lot of things. It has a bubble gum flavor. Mm -hmm. It's got like a brown sugar kind of taste, but it's not very sweet, but it's like the flavor, the maltiness of it. Ow. Sweetness on this is like, like a four out of 10. It's a little bit less than an actual apple. It actually tastes a little bit like apple though. And the texture on it is weird. It's like, when I had it over ripe, it was like soil, but it was like more dried out. When it's like this, it's kind of a, it's a little bit mealy, but more like a mealy apple. And I think usually people eat this as a juice. It's so much better than last time. The guys who have written to me and saying that I did it wrong, I'm sorry. <laughs> After that tour ended, I did another tour <laughs> with a different group of people and we found it again. But that time, the old man that was selling them only had a couple of them and the one that he gave us was actually underripe. And surprisingly, it was also pretty good. I haven't tried it yet, but everybody, you're, you're all enjoying it, right? Oh, yeah. You like this one? Really? This time it's a little under, and it tastes. Oh, well, here's some camera work. Okay. First taste I'm getting is like apple, but kind of tart and mealy. There's also kind of like a tropical taste, like a little pineapple bite, but not like the full pineapple, and a little bit of banana. It's really good. It reminds me of like um. Like, a, I don't know, like a tropical apple pie or, or something like that. Very different when you have it in the state, but really delicious. The wood apple, I've come full circle on this. When I first had it, I hated it. One of my least favorite fruits. I made it in the top 10 worst fruits of the world. Like this? I wouldn't put it in the best, but it's not like one of my favorite fruits, but it is really tasty. I'd be happily eating it. I would happily eat one of these again. So there you have it. My opinion on wood apple has completely changed. So why am I here talking to you? Well, I found wood apple randomly in New York City, which I've never seen this before. And I figured that this would be a good opportunity to do something with this. Wood apple is not normally just eaten out of hand. The fact that we were eating it with a spoon is, um, 
you know, some people eat it that way, but usually what people do with this is they make a drink out of it. So you either make a drink out of it with water, like making a, like a juice, or you mix it with coconut milk and sugar. So uh, I'm going to try that, but uh, here's the thing. These are New York City wood apples. I don't know where they came from. They came a long way though, so I'm not sure uh, if these are ready or not. I don't have an old man at a market to smell them for me. When I smell this, I don't really smell much of anything. It smells like leaves. I, I don't know what I'm smelling for. I did a little bit of research to see how to tell if these are ripe, and it was on a blog. I believe it's Indian Vegan. What she said in her blog is that in order to tell if these are ripe, you have to bounce them. Yes, so if you bounce them on the table and they bounce, that means that they are not ready yet. If they fall flat, that means they're ready to eat. When I got these, I tried bouncing them and I'm not sure exactly what I was looking for, but they did bounce a little bit. So I figured I'd wait a few more days. So I waited three more days and... It's about the same. This one. Hey! This one is still bouncing, but this one falls flat. So I'm gonna open up this one and hopefully it's not rotted inside. Yeah, usually how you open these is you smack them with the back of a cleaver or you smack them on a rock. Throw them on the ground. Okay. That is full of mold. Yep. So maybe the uh, bounce test is not the best way of going. Um, hmm. Now I'm kind of worried about waiting on this one. Because <laughs> not only is this one moldy on the inside, it's also, it also doesn't look like it's ready either. It's uh, supposed to be brown, and it's not brown. What do you think? Should I open it? Should I wait? I don't know. It didn't bounce. It didn't bounce. It also doesn't have a smell to it, but I'm worried that if I wait for too long, this is also going to get moldy. Um, hmm. Let's give it another day. Okay, last shot. It's been another two days, and this is... I think it's not bouncing as much. Okay, last shot, and uh, I just checked the supermarket to see if they had any more. They're all gone. <laughs> so I don't know if I'm going to ever find this again in New York, but uh, let's hope for the best. A little harder to open this time, so I think it's not rotted, at least. I think that's probably why it was so soft before. Come on! Uh, this is half rotted and half unripe. <laughs> I'll try a little bit of the unripe bit because, you know, I spent a lot of money on this. I think it was like 20 bucks or something, or 15, 20 bucks, something like that. Nah, that's um, kind of like how it tasted unripe in Thailand, only not as good. What I wanted to do with this was to make a juice out of it. That's what people do with wood apples usually. And if I were to make a juice out of this, it wouldn't be very good. I don't think that would be a good um, representation of what the juice is like. And I want to at least show how good it can be, not how bad it can be. <laughs> so, um, yeah, not going to do that. However, I have an idea.
wasn't able to make it myself, but I got my hands on some wood apple juice. See, wood apple products are very, very popular in Sri Lanka. And lucky for me, I live in New York City and there is a very big Sri Lankan community here in New York. Unlucky for me, they're in Staten Island. New Yorkers like to pick on Staten Island a lot. I mean, look at it. But between you and me, I kind of like it there. Staten Island is kind of cool. There's a lot of hidden gems there, a lot of really good restaurants, a lot of really good grocery stores, and Sri Lankan restaurants and Sri Lankan grocery stores are definitely a cool thing to check out. So if you go to New York, or if you live in New York, don't listen to what everyone tells you. Staten Island is, it's got some good stuff. So I got this, and I also got wood apple jam. So let's do it. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so <laughs> this tastes like they took mostly good wood apples, like the ones I had in Thailand, but that they had a similar problem to me and a couple bad ones got in the bunch. That's what this tastes like. Because I'm getting that flavor of what the fresh one tasted like when I had a good one. But I'm also getting a little bit of an overripe apple flavor. Maybe if you were to get this fresh or do it yourself and be very selective, you would get a better result than this. But even like this, like that little overripe apple flavor is not like ruining it for me. Mm. It's like apples with spices and cheese. So it's like apple pie a la mode with a slice of cheddar cheese on the side, something like that. It's, it's got a complexity to it that is beyond apple juice or beyond cider. It's, um, it's kind of rich. I mean, this is not just wood apple. There's also um, coconut milk. It also says a uh, key, I don't know how to pronounce this, kethal triacle. And kethal is a type of palm fruit that is used to make uh, sugar. That's a very specifically Sri Lankan um, specialty. There is a depth to this that is not in apple juice or apple cider. There is a spiciness to this that is not in those things. This definitely is its own fruit. It's very similar to apple, but there's another layer to it. And the fact that it has this um, kind of cheesy, eggnoggy kind of flavor to it, which is a little off-putting when you eat the fruit out of hand. When you add the milkiness of coconut to this, they work together. It ties it all together with the coconut milk, so that makes a lot of sense. Very unique, very tasty, and I'm not done. I've got this wood apple jam, so let's try this. Definitely has the cheesy smell. Hmm. It tastes like a really tasty apple pie filling sort of flavor, but then there's like this cheesy taste that comes out of nowhere and it kind of ruins it for me a bit. So, uh, I have an idea. Butter. So if we were to take some butter and put that on there. That works, and that works well. Without butter, it is like having this flavor of cheese minus the cream. You know, like if you were to take a piece of cheddar cheese and suck out all of the fat from it, all of the creaminess, all the milk, and just leave the funk, it would not be very good. And when you add creaminess, whether it is through coconut milk 
or through butter, it rounds it out. It rounds it out, it makes it make sense, and that now tastes good. So that's it for the wood apple. I can't say that this was an easy fruit to learn about. However, I can say that I did learn a lot. And one of the big things I learned about it is that if you wanna try this thing, go to a vendor that's selling it and make sure that they choose it and give you a good one. Because out of six wood apples that I have so far opened up on this channel, only two of them were good, and that is because someone else did it. <laughs> so I think uh, that is something to learn from right there. Have someone else do it that knows what they're doing. Don't try doing it yourself, because when you look at this fruit, you can't tell what's going to be inside of it. You have to have that special sense to do it. Let someone who knows what they're doing take care of it for you. And if you can't do that, if you can't find wood apple, then just go to your nearest Sri Lankan grocery store and pick up a bottle of the juice or get the jam and try it with butter. It is certainly worth going to Staten Island for. Thanks so much, everybody. I'll see you next time. I would like to give a big thank you to Smarter Every Day, Bill T, and Joseph McCorkle. They are mega patrons on Patreon.com. Patreon is how I keep this channel going. It is a huge help, so thank you. And to anyone watching who is interested in learning more about how you can support the channel and get some really cool bonuses in return, like early access to videos, exclusive videos, over a hundred of those. Uh, there's even a level where I will send you things in the mail. You gotta check it out. So check out the link in the description below.